Uh, my name is Elizabeth Thompson. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about using images in, in WordPress. I would tell you all the you know, fascinating stories about my life, uh, but we don't have time because I thought it was a good idea to, in a 45-minute session, tell you all about every aspect of, of uh, images, uh, which is not such a good idea. Um, just a couple of things. This is an introductory session, so I'm going to avoid technical jargon, and I'm going to avoid, as much as possible, talking about things that have to do with premium themes, that do things in a special way. This is pretty much straight up the way WordPress thinks about images and uses images, with just a couple of things about where to look in themes for help with, with how that works. Um, I'm also... Um, Oh, I'm not going to talk about plugins a lot. It seems like you go to WordCamp, you know, learn how to use WordPress, and then everybody tells you, you're like, add this, and add this, and add this, and add this. Uh, there are a couple of plugins that are significant that I might mention, but significant with images, but I'm not going to go into the fancy stuff. Uh, to work with images in WordPress, you need to have some images. And the truth is, uh, unless you're doing a photography blog, if you're doing almost anything else, you don't need to be a great photographer to take your own images. Um, you know, a cropped down in image that's interesting and relates to uh, the topic you're doing in some way is sometimes all you need. My most popular, I have like 10,000 images up on Flickr. The most popular one that gets used on blogs over and over again is a picture of like fruits and vegetables that I took at the grocery store. And it's not a great picture. In fact, sometimes you don't want a picture that's so stunningly magnificent that it takes away from the, from the content. So even if you think you're not a photographer, um, you know, the, the camera you're carrying around today takes better pictures than, than uh, makes, makes it easy. And consider taking your own pictures. Other than that, you can use other people's photographs if you have the rights to use them. I'm a librarian. I'm going to spare you almost spare you the copyright law kind of, kind of thing, but just because you go find a picture on the internet doesn't mean that you're free to use that. Um, stock photos, stock photos have become like really cheap and sometimes they're integrated into other sites. So a site like Canva, which is a great site for doing things like taking a picture of the ocean and putting an inspiring quote on it, that kind of stuff, um, comes with a lot of stock photos that you can use for free as part of Canva, and then others that you can buy for a dollar and, and all of that. So it's, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world to just, you know, pay a dollar and get a picture. Um, public domain, this is a picture from NASA. Um, public domain images are images that are not protected by copyright. And people get confused and use the word public domain sometimes to mean in the public sphere. They don't, they, but public domain is a specific legal term that relates to copyright. So images that are published before 1923 and sometimes afterwards are, are free to use in, in any way. Um, a creator, somebody who takes a photograph or creates an image, can, can declare it to be in the public domain. And photos by uh, U.S. government employees that they take in the course of their job are always public domain. And that's why you see so many pictures of those Depression era, you know, migrant mother and NASA pictures and stuff because they're completely free for anybody to use, commercial or not. Uh, Creative Commons license uh, is also great. Uh, this is a link to the organization. I'm not going to show it to you, um, but Creative Commons license gives <coughs> photographers like me, people put the pictures up on Flickr, um, a chance to say anyone can use this. They have to have attribution. They have to give me a credit line. Um, Commercial, I can either say yes commercial or no com to commercial, and allow adaptations of uh, the work to be shared. And the answers are yes, no, or yes, but if you make a fabulous design using one of my pictures of a diner and you superimpose other things on it, you can't then declare that new image all rights reserved. Image sources, Google Advanced Image Search um, has, can I close the mic? Uh, what? Oh, okay, I'm going to keep talking, that's right. 
Um, Google Advanced Image Search lets you search by license. Flickr shows you the, the uh, licenses. Wikimedia Commons, which is the image source for Wikipedia and lots of other images that aren't in Wikipedia, is a great source of free uh, images. And Photopin uh, gives you even the embed code to use. OK, image sizes. Here's the short version of this. Make your images smaller. The images that come out of your camera are very big. And you don't want to load a very big image into WordPress. It takes up storage space. It slows down your site transmitting it. Um, so you want to reduce that. And you're reducing that typically in two ways. The file size, which I think was like the weight. That's the number that ends in KB or MB that tells you like how big that file is. And the dimensions. Uh, my camera takes pictures at 4,896 uh, 4, pixels by 3,672 pixels. On the screen, that means, unless you have a really big monitor, you're really going to have, that's way too large to just serve up over the web. Um, so you want to reduce that. And aspect ratio is the size of the pictures that I take reduced to um, the relationship of the width to the height. So very standard is four to three. So the images I take are four to three. So I can always reduce them down, keep them exactly the same, what I think of as the shape, the, you know, um, uh, to anything that's also a four to three ratio. Um, the ways you can adjust the size, um, resizing means shrink. It's also scaling the image. So when you just resize it, you're shrinking. You say, I, I love the picture. It's perfectly composed. I don't want to change any aspect of it. I don't want to lose anything. I just want to shrink it down. Um, cropping means I'm going to take a pair of virtual scissors. I'm going to cut off the left end or the right end or my ex-husband. Or you know, you're going to you're going to you're going to change the shape of the image because it doesn't scale down or because you're you know, you've got extraneous uh, stuff around the edge. Um, reducing the file size, there are technical ways to do this, but often it's all you need to do is look for the option in your image program that says save for web. That's what that means. Uh, always preserve the original, by the way. The task here is to make a copy to upload to WordPress, not to destroy your original that you may want later to get big giant prints or anything else. Um, Photoshop, I, I'm not capable of using Photoshop. I just, it, me and Photoshop don't, it's, it seems to involve like math and other things, things like that. So we don't do well. Um, if you're like me, if you're good at Photoshop, then I don't need to tell you anything about it. Um, I use PicMonkey, but there are a million of these programs that make it easy to do technical tasks. So this is a screenshot and I'm cropping an image. So I said I want this constrained, I want this to be a square, and then I just like draw on the screen the, the square that I want. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but under crop, it has scale photo and actual size. Uh, if I had clicked on scale photo, then it thinks I want to shrink the photo down, so as I put a number in the first one, it's going to shrink it down to four by three, doing the math to, to do that. Um, so you need to make sure you use that option when that's what you're really trying to do, and you don't use that option if that's not what you're trying to do. And this is resizing, which is more typically what you're doing. You love the image, you just want a, a smaller version of it. Um, I have keep proportions there, and that means when I type in the first number, I typed in 1,200, and it went, I know, 900, <laughs> and, and uh, filled that in. So it saves you from doing any of that. Um, and when you save images in PicMonkey, this is, this is their cutesy way of dealing with the file size. They give you three options. Roger, Pierce, and Sean. I don't know why they don't just say like good, better, and best, or whatever, but I just, in any software you're using, there's usually a way to adjust the quality that you're, that you're saving. So I'm saying you're saving it as Pierce for no apparent reason, and it tells me the file size. That file size is actually a little larger than I liked, but, you know. Um, the final name, people don't do this. People, I mean, I, some people do. Um, people have hundreds of images in their file system and stuff with names like Dee 
PSC, oh, whoa, well, stop it doing what? That's going to do you no good whatsoever when you're trying to find images later. I mean, WordPress conceals that from you, but still, someday you're going to be looking for that file <coughs> as a file. Also, it's good for SEO, search uh, engine optimization. So if you give the file a meaningful name, that's more information that Google can use to say, oh, I know what this picture is about. It's about the choke bridge in Ipswich. Um, so that's the best practice, is to use significant words and to um, use hyphens rather than underscores to connect them together, because Google considers underscores joining and you want to, you really want the equivalent of a space to say choke is a word and bridge is a word. Uh, this is the most common way that you add an image to WordPress. You're, you're writing a post, you have a sudden need at the beginning or the end of, the, the, of your writing to um, add something. So you're clicking on the add media button. And when you click on that, you get this screen, this insert media screen. Um, this screen has two tabs. You can see there's one that's media library and one that's upload files. Uh, this I, I chose here, upload files, and now I can drag or drop uh, you know, the image to uh, drag and drop or click and browse and, and find the image I want and add it. Here I am finding the image. Now, this is the screen, so it's like it's uploaded the file. You see it now with all the other files I've already uploaded. And over in the left are some very important things that people sometimes skip. So I divided the, that, excuse me, right. I divided the right sidebar into three sections. So the first section, the top section, is just information. So it's sort of, it shows us a small version. It gives us the file name, the upload date, the image size, the image dimensions. Uh, it has a link to edit images and to delete, in case you just uploaded it and you realize The next section is the media library information. And the first line of that is, um, it just displays the URL for you. You can't edit it there, it's just, it's just telling you, here's where I put it. Um, that's very handy. It's, it's handy if you ever want to come back and email somebody a photo that you used on the blog or whatever. This is a very easy way to just grab the, the URL. Um, the title. The title is important. The ti it will give it any title that it finds, like the file name or you know, something useless like that. You really want to give your image the title. This isn't the title of your post. This is like, you know, front view of the Hutchinson house or whatever. Um, it's it's information you can use to search on later, and it's what displays in the media library when you're trying to find something. The alt text, the alt text is what text do you want a user to see or to hear if they're using a screen reader? Um, what, what replaces basically the, the image? Um, and so it's very important to put, fill that out. It's an accessibility issue, and you need to think um, in terms of they're not seeing the image, so you need to tell them this is a photograph of, you know, whatever, and whatever level of description um, seems appropriate. You can find tons of stuff on good practices for using alt text, but it's important. And the description, this is where you can put anything else. In most themes, this doesn't display in many places except for the, the, the attachment page, which if I talk fast enough, I'll get to. Um, but the... Um, never enter anything into WordPress in any little box thinking it's private because you'll switch themes one day. So the place where you can fill out your user information and you know you, you can't put like I'm an idiot and I can't figure out how to do any of this because someday you'll use a different theme and that will be like permanently displayed. Now the last part is the part about you putting the image on your page right now. Uh, the first question is, do you want it to be aligned left, so on the left side with the text on the right, uh, aligned right, which is the opposite, centered, that's typically what you use with a larger image and you want it centered on the page, or none. The answer is never none, unless your theme is taking care of images in some other way and you don't need, you know, you don't need it. So typically you choose from one of those. The next one is one of the most often confused options, which is link to. Um, this is like, is the photo a link? 
And if so, when they click on it, what happens? Um, the answer none means the photo isn't a link. I think people should use this more. If you're putting a small image and you make it clickable, that implies you're going to get to something better. So when they just get to like, here's that image file all by itself, and it's a logo. You know, it's like, that's just a waste of time. So I, so use none if you don't have anything better to offer people. Uh, the media file is probably the most often used. So you click on the image and you get to a larger, you get to the full size version of the image. This is another reason for not uh, uploading a big giant image. Because they're going to click, and I have an example that we, I don't want to get to see, but um, of a picture of donuts, cider donuts at the, you know, at the orchard. And it's a very nice, you know, picture of like a couple of donuts. Um, I loaded it intentionally this way, so I loaded the full size image. So you click on this, and you get an image that fills your screen, and you know, your operating system is also, your browser is also giving you like a little plus sign, because it's like, oh wait, there's more, and if you click on that, it's like, you, you can see every piece of cinnamon on the donut, and that's just overkill. Uh, the attachment page, this is the least used and least well understand, understood thing. WordPress automatically creates a page about the image, and that can be what you get to when you click on the image. Um, the reason people don't understand it is many things haven't bothered to think about what that page should look like, and so you click on it and you're like, what the hell? Or, excuse me, you're like, I don't understand the <laughs> thought process of the designer here. Um, but it, it, it can be very useful. That is where the description dis typically displays, and you can do other things. Okay, oh my god. I, I assume you're not just waiting. Uh, custom URL means I want them, when they click on this author's page, on my author visit thing, to go to the author's website or whatever. So let's specify a URL. Um, the, when you upload an image, WordPress makes smaller sizes of it. It makes a thumbnail medium, large, and full size. And if you went and looked in your, in your, in your uh, uh, file system, you would see that it has made oh, those, those settings, uh, those uh, separate images. And it's using some settings that are in media um, settings. And if you don't think the large size is large enough, you can go and change that. But you're changing it for like any theme, any time, and you're changing it for going forward. So there is a plugin called Regenerate Thumbnails. You go through and redo all your images if you make a change to that. Uh, this is your media library. Just interest. Just, just remember, you can always come back and see all of your images, and you can search to find them. That's the other reason for putting in good words in the, in the, uh, in the description and caption and so on. Uh, I don't remember why I'm showing you this, so I'm going to hurry through it. Um, here's what is a mostly bad way to add images. You're in the if you're in the text editor, not the visual editor. You have an image button, which seems like an awesome way to add an image, and it asks you for a URL, and you put it in, and then it asks you for alt text, and you put it in, and uh, now your image is there um, embedded in your page. But it's not your, necessarily your image, so you're really sort of hotlinking. So every time somebody looks at that page, they're looking at your page plus my image that's being summoned out of context. So I really would not do that, except for with one of my own images that's on some other site. People, some photographers really hate that, and they'll track you down and find you. So you said don't put it in using the text editor, you said put the image in and what? It's put the, <coughs> put the image in using the add media button. Okay. So that you're really adding it to your page. Oh, the other reason to not use the image button and just pull somebody else's image in, either accidentally or on purpose, somebody else may get rid of that image. Or if they're nasty, they replace it with, I will not tell you what the typical image for replacing such things is. Uh, this is Flickr embed code, you don't care. But you can, but <laughs> Flickr on every image gives you share links that gives you the ability to pull an image in. Um, from Flickr in a nice way that, that gives all the links and stuff, but you still, you know, should get permission. Okay, featured images, this is the most important thing. Featured images mean whatever your theme says they mean. So, typically, um, if you can, 
add a featured image by putting it as a featured image box on the composer screen. That shows me that I've added one. Um, you can go in and just choose an image and say, I want to set this to be the featured image. This is the typical way that they're used. They're used for thumbnails in a display of all of them. So you've got like six images on one of those posts, but this is the one that gets the thumbnail status. Um, a lot of themes also put them in the full post. This theme doesn't. I actually like this better. So if I want to have an image here, I get to decide how big and where and what is it linked to and all of that. This theme does again the same thing, the small uh, post thumbnails. Um, but on the image, on the page, on the post itself, it has already helpfully put the image in. So every post I do on this site is going to have the featured image. Left aligned, this size, and in the case of this theme, not linked to anything. Um, it, and if you change um, themes from one like the first one, where you put the images in yourself to one like the second one, you'll get uh, doubles. I will send this out. I've got a whole brilliant thing that explains what you've added with examples and so on, but, but unfortunately we're not going to talk about it today. Um, it's just theme designers don't always say, here's how I handle featured images, and so you just have, sort of have to figure out, um, and I, I uh, advise testing. Headers are another place that you use images. Um, to find where to use where the header is, I came over to appearance. Uh, I saw a header and I saw customize. Any of those links would have worked to get me to the place uh, where I can choose and crop a header image. Um, and it looks just like this. It looks just like Facebook or many other sites. So I chose an image for my header. And I get to slide the little thing up and down to decide, like, what slice of this image do I want? To be honest, sometimes you luck out, and this just exactly works. And sometimes you're better off, it tells you the size that it's looking for. Sometimes you're better off to go to an editing program and hand, you know, hand create um, a, a slice for your header. Um, many things uh, have an option where you, you can upload many. And then there's an option to randomize them, so you can get different headers uh, every time somebody loads it, which is kind of fun. Uh, I, okay. <laughs> um, I just want to show you that you can create a gallery within WordPress. Lots of people use all kinds of, you know, plugins and stuff to, to do this. But just on its own, um, in the media settings, you can go choose a group of images, um, you can add um, captions to any that are missing them, and you can say, I want these four images to display in one row, four across, and then you get the code, then you just, it just pops it in for you. Uh, and so if you clicked on any of these, it, it goes someplace. So you don't need fancy plugins to do a simple uh, gallery. And content sliders are, are dependent on the theme, if it's built in, or on the um, uh, plug-in, and I will send this out, and it shows you two different places to go check and understand what the con con what the content slider is doing and how it's choosing what images. Is the content slider when you hit the arrow and it goes yeah, to the next? Yeah, yeah, or carousel is another name for it, or or uh, or anything. Um, it seems like the settings for for content sliders are more concerned with talking about the transitions and things than they are with the where, how you get the content and what your options are for content. And I will post this, send this out, hand you copies of it personally and, and all of that, but I, I do go into a little detail. What's more, I hated the... And I, this is now a question, so for questions? Um, I mean, you have a few more minutes if you want to continue with your talk. If you want to. Um, all right, let me just explain the biggest issue with content, with uh, content sliders. Um, they often have decided one way that you're going to be able to get the images. So you, it's going to pull everything from the category featured, or everything from this tag. Um, this one, unusually enough, uses pages, not posts which is like a very unusual way to do a content slider, and it doesn't give you any other options. Um, this one 
if you could read the uh, options here, it lets you choose custom, which means I'm going to hand do these things, um, category, so you can say everything with the category featured, um, selected post, which is so you can say, uh, right now I want to show post 1835 arbitrarily uh, do that, or selected pages, which is the same kind of thing. So you want to look for something that matches what your data looks like and what you're likely to want to do with a, with a content slider. And then you can read all the stuff about trans 50 transitions and all that, but this is the, the crucial part and what causes people to get far into trying to work with a particular theme before they realize it's, it's not going to work for them. Questions? Yeah. So um, we have microphones in the front here. Um, I can bring one around. If you have a question, just raise your hand. I'll bring the microphone to you. Thank you. I'm wondering, um, in the media library, is there a way to organize different types of files in that library? I'm always getting confused. You know, like I want to organize, I have images as one and documents and other kinds of things. Is there a way to sort that out? Um, there's a drop down that lets you do some, you know, basic kind of sorting, but it's, uh, and if you choose the option when you set up your site to divide them into months, then you can say, I only want to see the posts that, you know, the pictures. Uh, there are plugins that let you add basically categories or tags to your images. Uh, the other thing that I do is try to use standard language in the, um, in the description. So if something is a picture from the national, of a site on the National Register of Historic Places, I put that phrase and the National Register number in there so I know I can always sort, you know, um, you know search for them. But there are plugins that, that provide more kind of database structure to that. Okay, I'm good. Bring them to Oh, yes. Uh, would you be able to recommend any uh, third party sources, resources for if you have like a large volume of photos? Like, for, for example, our school district has, we might post like 300 pictures of a graduation ceremony, and we're looking for a professional service to do that. Uh, we've been using Fanfare, which is a paid service for a few years, but since they were sold to Carbonite, they haven't done anything to update it, so... I don't know anything about that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thought I'd ask. But, oh, fine. Yes. Uh, what about Yoast in that alt text? I've been needing to use my keyword in my posts. I can't ask. <laughs> Curious as to how to handle the alt text option for Yoast because I need to put my keyword that I use on all of my blog posts in that spot, and I'm just wondering if I'm doing it right. Or I actually do don't know how that works. I mean, I, I I don't know how the Yoast stuff works in, in that. Okay. okay. Does anyone know how that works? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> I told you beginners. I meant myself. I don't have anything to do What do you recommend for retina scan, the, the, the high res, like on Apple? I, um, here, I, being as this is a beginner session, that's the kind of, I mean, that's the kind, that's the kind of stuff that, first of all, I don't understand very well myself, and um, that I'm, I'm not going to try to give you a technical answer because there may be other smart people in the room who understand more about that. So, so we really didn't shouldn't have saved some time for questions. Uh, only, well, we've got, we've got maybe two more. Let's just see. I just mean that questions turn out to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> just see if you had any uh, ideas or care to share your experience on customizing images for mobile use. So you've created your site, and then you also want it to be a lively site for mobile interface. You know, are you changing? Can you customize things like headers specifically for mobile use, as well as the images you're using in your posts, etc.? Uh, first of all, you should use a theme that's responsive. 
that kind of has that, that stuff built in. Um, now when you look at themes, when you look at the theme demo and stuff, they have the little images for a tablet, a, a phone and stuff to get, let you see that. Uh, also, in this current version of WordPress, they've added responsive images. Uh, and WordPress now, and I, this is, the, I, I won't do the technical part because I don't understand it, but, but WordPress now does a better job of choosing an appropriate size image no matter what you said. It's like, yeah, they're on a phone, I'm, I'm going to give them a smaller version of, of that image. Um, so use a good theme, you know, test it out yourself, um, but, but uh, things are working much better than they used to be. Would you recommend using a plugin, any kind of an image optimizer plugin? You said that when WordPress takes the images in, it automatically reduces them, but I, I put a plugin on my site, I don't know if it's doing anything. Um, it's probably um, shrinking the, you know, shrinking them, them down to make the smaller file size and uh, faster loading. Um, yeah, there are a lot of plugins that are related to images and image management and image optimization, um, which if you have a large, very image-heavy site, might make a real difference. Also, depending on your hosting service, you may need, you know, more, more optimization. Um, but yeah, they, they, yes. One minute. Someone have an easy question. <laughs> yes? Are the carousels less light because it's a lot more work to scroll? I know I've been mentioning that on several websites that I hate having to scroll through 25 pages when maybe I don't want to read three of them or something. Uh, you can set it, I, less light, who knows? Because I think they're one of those things that they're love them or hate them kind of thing. Um, you can set the number of images that are going to appear there. You also should be, that's one of the reasons I like control over that, is um, not everything needs to be on the carousel. Just because you, uh, I work with a lot of libraries, and they want to put the three or four programs that are coming up that they're really trying to feature, not like, you know, we're going to be done tomorrow, you know, that kind, of, that kind of stuff doesn't necessarily need to be there. So you want control over that. Um, and, you know, that's, that's about it. Also, some people hate the transitions, and some people love the transitions, and, and all that. I guess you get to know your audience. Yeah. 